everyone. I want to introduce you today to a colleague from the University of Limerick in Ireland. We met on a Carpe Diem Learning Design Workshop recently, and he spoke so passionately to me about eativities. I thought you'd like to hear from him yourself. So, Pep, thank you very much for being here today. Please, can you introduce yourself? Jilly, it's, it's lovely talking to you uh, today. So, indeed, um, my name is Pepine Veneven. Everyone calls me Pep, just like Jilly. Uh, I work in the University of Limerick, where I run a, a master's course in artificial intelligence. Now, this master's course is um, for people who are already in industry in, in Ireland and who are full-time employed in industry. So clearly this, uh, this course needed to be uh, online. And that of course is, is the link with, uh, with, with what you do, uh, Jilly. So how did you discover the eTivities framework? Did you stumble across it in the corridor or did someone tell you about it? Yeah, no, we, we were stumbled across them. <laughs> we were very fortunate that we had some really good educational technologists on our program who uh, were uh, very familiar with activities and, and uh, basically introduced us to activities. Um, early on, before we started developing ourselves, I did an e-moderation course here within the University of Limerick, which was an absolutely fantastic experience. The e-moderation course also used activities. Uh, so from a learner perspective, I also saw how powerful they are. And at that stage, I was basically sold. I knew what they could do for us. And that's when I said, OK, we need to give this a shot as well in our own online program. Um, many people find the best way to do it is as a learner. But I think over the pandemic, we were all thrown into the deep end with, without the chance to splash around, first of all. So, so you discovered activities. You knew you wanted it for AI students and working students at that. How did you go about designing for that type of audience? We were very fortunate, I have to say. So this program is um, uh, partly sponsored by ICT Skillnet, which is a national agency, which is basically the bridge between industry and, and academia. So they make sure that, that, that industry get the right skills or that they upskill in the right areas. And they then create programs within universities. So we uh, got the contract for a national master's in artificial intelligence and as a result and, and that's why this was a huge opportunity for us we could design the program from scratch which is not not normally you, you can do that normally you have to drag in modules that already exist but because this was going to be online and because it was through ICT Skillnet, they provided funding and also support in developing all the uh, the modules so that's why we could say, right, we're going to do all of this according to a good online methodology. And that, that's how we really ended up with the uh, with, with activities. Um, initially, we just, after having done this e-moderation course and understanding what an activity is, we then started designing them um, basically with not quite pen and paper, but uh, nothing like Carpe Diem, for example. So it was really using Word to put together some sort of a user story, but not as, um, as structured as perhaps we could have done. So what happened when you delivered them to the students? Students were um, extremely pleased. Overall, the, the students were very positive about the activities. So this was uh, fantastic for us. So from a student perspective, we saw that we got a lot of very good feedback. Now with these students, because they're mature students, they also give you, but in a very positive way, they give you the negative feedback. So we knew very early on what worked and what didn't work and what we needed to adjust. So we were constantly adjusting our activities and the methodology around our activities to um, uh, to cater for for these online students as best as uh, as possible and i think from our perspective what we saw that the learning that students achieve with the, these activities is absolutely fantastic it's real deep learning that's amazing to report that and these were students learning programming as well yes in in, in indeed <laughs> so because this is a program in artificial in intelligence uh, these uh, students will do an awful lot of programming. So Python is a particular uh, uh, language, uh, software language that is often used in machine learning. So in a first module, for example, students would have learned Python and then afterwards they start applying 
bites into machine learning problems. And machine learning is basically a, a subset of artificial intelligence, where you try to learn the patterns that you find in there, or, or where you try to find patterns in data and learn from that. So uh, because it's not your, um, it's, it's not the type of module where, for example, like I saw in my own e-moderation module, where you do activities that end with a reflective blog, where you kind of, where you basically think about what you've learned and then write it down. We found that that didn't really work for us, but we found that there is, uh, we kind of, we call it reflection through action. So we get to, we get students to do very extensive forum interaction where they also share code. And from that, then they learn, okay, there are different ways of solving this problem. How can I apply what a peer has done in my own solution? How can I improve on my own uh, solution? Or how can I help a peer improve his or her solution? And we found that there is um, a fantastic opportunity there for students to really reflect on what they've done initially and, and in improve their own skills um, in, in the process. And is this the way they may need to work at work when they get to work in this area? Because it seems to me that you would Im imagine the programmer be quite a loner, but in practice, I think that you've got to try things out with all sorts of other people. Yeah, absolutely, Jilly. I think these days the, the, the reality of software development is that you often do it in, in very big groups. Uh, but I think indeed what you get here is that uh, because students really engage with each other through forums, through their code, giving each other tips and suggestions for improvements or asking each other questions, you really get a fantastic interaction in the group. Um, and what we found is that not only the, the academic results were better because of their interaction in the group, but also students came back to us saying that they really enjoyed working in the groups and they saw each other as friends, even though they had never met each other uh, face to face or only very few times. Yeah, that, it's quite common that people report that, although people don't believe it at the beginning, that there is more in depth learning. And, and in fact, I think one of the reasons is that there's fewer stereotypes and then you're focusing on the tasks and what you're doing and learning from each other. So I'm really glad to hear that work for you. Yeah. No. Um, what's next? What's next? So we, we have big plans. Um, so we now have a, a, a master's in artificial intelligence and natural language processing. So that's basically understanding what people are saying and writing and then trying to use that um, in, in, in systems where you answer to customers or where you, where you do something. Um, you know, you, you only have to give a voice command rather than, having, for, for example, to drive your car, those types of applications. We're going to create a new program specifically for that area. So uh, we'll be applying activities for sure. And what I would love to do is, is, is use the Carpe Diem approach to developing these activities. I think for us, that's now, um, it's, a, it's a really nice point in time to do it because we now know what activities are. We know that they work really, really well. We've designed them semi-structured, I would say. And I think now it's a good time to, to add the structure to the development of our own activities as well. We'll have to organize that for you, Pep. Excellent. Um, <laughs> can, I, can I say thank you very much for sharing this fantastic work that you're doing. I'm sure everyone will be really admiring of it and, and also for your time today. Very, very much, much appreciate all the best with your future work. So thank you everyone for listening. Um, I'm sure you'll be interested in that story. Speak to you soon. Bye, Pep. Thank you. Thank you very much, Shelley. Lovely talking to you. Bye now.